functions functions let's step into the wonderful world of functions now i'll just go on record saying this functions are hands down the most valuable tool to programming now why is that well functions share a lot of commonality with methods for they allow you to be able to reuse code giving you the ability to write more neat and nice code which in effect makes it easier to read giving you a better grasp on your code but the advantage that functions have over methods is that you can pass in data and slightly alter the code that is ran within a function making them extremely powerful so for example say you have an inventory class that can hold four items and you want to remove the items well, instead of creating four different methods that you can call to remove the four various items, inventory.removeItem1, inventory.removeItem2, so on and so forth, that will all run the same exact code minus maybe a variable or two. With functions, you can pass in, for example, the item number, and using the same code can remove that item. Now, talking about the theory of functions is great and all, but let's take a look at how to use functions practically with code, because I promise this will become so much easier to understand. And we're going to do this using two different languages because I think it can be really helpful for you to see how they compare and contrast. And plus, you'll pretty much learn two languages at once. So on the left is the language C Sharp using the IDE Visual Studio, which should interest you if you want to do Windows development or make games using a popular game engine called Unity. And on the right is the language Python 3 using the IDE Visual Studio code, which should interest you if you want to get into more general programming or data science. All right, so here I have two brand new console projects. And if you don't know how to make a new console project in either C Sharp or Python or both, be sure to check out the video in the description. Uh, it's called How to Install an IDE. And at the end of that video, I'll show you how to do that. All right, who's ready to have some fun with some functions? Now, before we can do that, we need to go over the syntax for functions in both C Sharp and Python. Over here on the left in C Sharp, I'm gonna get rid of these two lines. They come standard with every new console project, but I don't need them. And then in this code block, I'm going to initialize a function, which if you're familiar at all with methods, this is gonna seem very familiar to you. I'm just gonna type out void, and then the name of our function, which I'm just call f for now, and then start and end parentheses. Now, if you're familiar at all with methods, you're probably looking at this and you're like, wait a second, that's just the method what's going on here and yes you're right methods and functions have a lot of overlap but what makes functions super cool and extremely useful is that you can pass in some input so if I type in right here if I initialize an int and then I'm gonna call this uh, X for f of X that's a standard notation for functions uh, I can now make my code block here, and we can do something with this input within the code block. For example, let's say that we want to take our input x, and we simply just want to times it by 2. So I'll use the multiplication operator and then times it by 2. And then to see this change, let's come down here and add a console.writeLine just to print to the console. And then we're going to put in here our x variable. Well, now we can do something cool with this function. If I just come to the beginning of the script and then I'm going to initialize an integer, uh, I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know, my number, for example, and then let's make it nine. And so now I just want to call f and then pass in my number, which is nine. And what it's going to do is it's going to take my number in this function and in here it's just going to times by 2 and print it out. And to prove that to you, I'm going to come right underneath our function and add a console.read uh, key so that the terminal doesn't close on us as soon as we run it. Hit the start button and our terminal is over here. You can see that 9 times 2 does in fact equal 18. Now in Python, the syntax is a bit different. Uh, I'm just going to start off by initializing our integer my num, uh, assign a 9 to it, and then our, our function has to come before we actually call it. So I'm going to initialize that first. I'm going to say def uh, with the name f, and then we're going to pass in our input x, and then I'm going to use a colon here, go down into the code block, and then I'm going to do x times equals 2, no different than what we did in C sharp, and then simply just print out whatever x is. Then lastly, we can just call our f function by saying f and then passing in my num. Uh, no, wait, my num, what am I doing? My num, and there you have it. 
gonna press the play button just to prove to you this works and bada boom you see that we have 18. Now we just barely scratched the surface with functions but hopefully you can already see how much power we have with just this very simple example. Allow me to show you one more example before we move on. Imagine that we have a list of names and we want to add Mr. or Mrs. to the beginning of those names. Well, we can simply get rid of this integer, no longer need that. Uh, what else do we don't need? We actually don't need this function anymore, so we don't need this. Um, we'll keep the console. Actually, let's just get rid of the whole entire program. Let's start over from scratch. I'll do the same for Python. So let's initialize a string array. Uh, let's call it a uh, name and then that equals a new string array of size. Let's uh, let's initialize the size of three, make it simple. And then we can come in here and manually set the variables within our array. So I'll do zero equals, uh, let's say his name is Johnny. And then let's say that name of element one is equal to Carla. And then name of element two is equal to, let's just say Zach. Zach, can I spell Zach? Thank you. So now let's write out our function that will do this process for us. I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to do a void and then let's call it um, surname. I believe they're surnames. <laughs> uh, and then we can pass in, uh, let's see a string and this is going to be let's call it sir as the variable and so now we can do um, down here name of zero equals sir plus name of zero and then of course let's uh, let's print this out so that we can see what's going on console dot right line so what I'm looking for, and we can print out name of zero. Uh, come on, there we are. And then we can call our surname here. And then let's pass in um, Mr. Mr. with the space there. And then of course, console dot read key. So that terminal doesn't close on us. Also, I'm just gonna write right here just because it's fun to make the distinction that our program ends here. And so I went ahead and wrote out the program in Python so you don't have to sit and listen to my silence for a couple of minutes. But it does the same exact thing. We have the name list here that is initialized with Johnny, Carla, and Zach in it. And then we initialize our surname function that takes the input of sir. And we essentially just assign uh, sir plus the name of element zero um, to name of element zero. So we just essentially reassign it. And then we print it out and here is when we call the actual function itself. And so if I just come up here to the play button and press it, you can see that again, we have Mr. Johnny, except for <laughs> I put the period in the wrong spot. It's supposed to go there, press it again, bada boom. All right, cool. So now we have a surname function that adds a surname to our names. However, we have three names and I really don't wanna to have to write three different functions just to do this. Well, thankfully, we don't have to, thanks to this next feature that further makes functions even more powerful. So there is no real limit on how many inputs we can pass in with our function. And at the fact that we're using an array here, we can just pass an integer to change whatever element in the name array that we want. And so to do that, I'm just going to add an integer variable at the beginning here. Uh, I'm gonna call it, uh, I'm just call it IND for index. And then we can simply just replace this zero here with IND, whatever uh, integer we pass in, IND again, and then IND. And lastly, we just come up here and then just pass in uh, the zero. So we want to change the zero element in the name array, which corresponds to Johnny. Run that again by hitting the play button at the top here, bring the console window over, and you can see nothing has changed. And so now that we have this added flexibility, I can simply take this line and copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, and just 
change the index to one, which is Carla, and two, which is Zach. And of course, Carla is not a mister, so we can change that to a missus here. And when we run this, it's gonna print out all three of them. So I'll just press the play button again and bring the window over. And would you look at that? Mr. Johnny, Mrs. Carla, and Mr. Zach. Function is working perfectly. And over in Python, we can do the same exact thing. So I'm gonna pass in an input variable here called ind again separate them with the comma that's important for both syntaxes separate your variables with commas and then we can replace all of the uh, element numbers here with ind and then just pass the integer in when we call the function let me get there uh, right here so mr zero and then of course we can do copy paste paste and then one and two Carla is a missus, hit the save button, clears all errors, then we hit the play button, and would you look at that, Mr. Johnny, Mrs. Carla, and Mr. Zach. I'll never stop saying this, but functions are the greatest thing there is. I love functions. And if you think that it stops there, well, you're in for a bit of a surprise. But first, let me introduce a problem to you. Say that we wanted to come down to the bottom of our program and initialize a new string, right? And the name here, let's just say this is the boss's name. And it equals um, Helen. And now, what if we wanted to add a surname to Helen's name? Well, because this surname function is directly tied to the name array, we kind of can't at the moment. I mean, of course, we could just come in here and just add it manually, Mrs. Helen, or we could remove this and then just come down to the next line and do something like, boss equals, uh, what is it, Mrs. plus boss here, and then we also want to do a console dot. Yeah, we, we could redo the same code over if we really wanted to. Imagine that you were doing this as an automated task. Well, you wouldn't want to manually go and add the surname to all the names that you have, and you wouldn't really want to rewrite the code over and over and over. And so the solution to this problem is by changing this function from being a variable dependent function into a variable independent function. And we can do that by using the return statement. And so to do that, first I'm gonna get rid of these two lines because they're just for an example. And then I'm gonna go into our surname function and we're gonna return a string. So I'll initialize a string, I'll call it temp, and then I'll assign it to be an empty string for now. And now we have to replace all of the variable references to the name array into the temp because this is what makes this function variable dependent. So I'm gonna change this here to temp, and then I'm gonna change this one to temp as well. And then I'm gonna change this here to temp. And actually, because we need to input what the original name is, we actually don't need to initialize this here, so I'm gonna get rid of that line. And we can now change our integer uh, variable input into a string variable input and call it temp. And so the very last thing we need to do here is we need to change the data type of our function from a void to be a string. And then you'll see we get an error saying that it doesn't return a value. Uh, when you cast the data type on your functions, they have to return the same type of data type in the return. So we'll go down here and add return and temp is a string, so we'll just return back the temp, which has been modified with sir at the beginning. And so now, because we changed the input to surname from the data type integer to string, you can see that we have three errors here for the times that we called it. These are currently integers, they need to be strings, which is no problem. We can just input the actual name that we wanna change here. So, of course, the first one is name of element zero, and I'm lazy, so I'm gonna copy and paste this, paste and paste, and change this to one and two, which again corresponds here. And if I just hit save and then the start button up here, and then bring the console over, you can see that absolutely nothing has changed. Function works exactly the same. However, the very last thing that we have to do to make this completely functional is, again, right here, it's printing out the temp. So this is only temporary. We get a reference to that and then we change it and then we return it. But you can see here that it's not being assigned to anything. 
So that's the final thing that we have to do here. But before we do, to further illustrate my point, I'll simply come at the bottom here and do a console.write line. And then we're going to print out name zero. And then I'm going to copy paste a few times because I'm lazy. Change it to one and two. And so if I come up here and hit the start button and bring the console window over, you can see that, yes, the surnames were added for the first three, which is what is inside the actual surname function. But the last three that were printed, which is outside the surname function and is the actual ground truth to our name of zero element, name of one element and name of two element are still the same exact as we initialized it. And so to fix this, we simply just have to assign it whatever is being returned right here. So name of zero equals surname with the inputs and name of one equals surname with the inputs and name of two equals surname with the inputs. Come up here, hit the start button, bring the window over and you can see that they have actually been assigned. And just to walk you through what's going on here, uh, on these three right here, we will assign that name of zero element, name of one element, name of two element will equal surname with some inputs. And so we go into the function and we pass in the inputs uh, temp, which is the actual name at the moment. And then surname is the name that we want to add to the beginning of the name. And so we will assign the surname to the beginning of the name and then we will print that out and then we will return temp. And so because this whole function right here is returned with the value whatever temp is, which again is calculated here, we will assign that return value to name of element zero, name of element one, and name of element two. And now at last to bring it full circle, now that we have this flexible variable independent function surname, we can initialize our boss string here, uh, which equals Helen and simply just reassign it by going boss equals surname and then we're going to pass in boss here and we can pass in Mrs. And as simple as that. And just to prove it to you, I'm going to get rid of these three lines, make it a bit less confusing. Hit the star button and bring the window over. And as you can see, we have Mr. Johnny, Mrs. Carla, Mr. Zach, and at the very end, Mrs. Helen. Now that is how you write good code. And so over in Python, we can make this change really easily as well. We can simply just change this to say temp and then change this as well to say temp and then change this one to say temp. And of course, we want to change our input to B temp. Oops. And then come down here. And then we want to assign this to be name of zero. And then this one to be name of one. And then this one to be name of two. Of course. And then we need to assign this here. Name of zero equals surname with these inputs. And then name of of one equals surname with those inputs and then I'm lazy so I'm gonna copy and paste the last one change that to two name is surname equals the last of those inputs and of course I'm getting an error here uh, it's saying that assigning to a function which it doesn't return uh, I forgot to return here so we're simply just do return temp and then of course we can't forget our boss Helen so we can initialize that by saying boss equals surname and because we're initializing this we simply just pass in Helen like so and then Mrs. Can come up here hit the play button and voila Mr. Johnny, Mrs. Carla, Mr. Zach and Mrs. Helen. Functions are just absolutely incredible. I love these things. We barely scratch the surface with what's possible with functions here, but hopefully your creative juices are flowing and you're thinking of different ways on how you might be able to apply a function. I've said it before and I'll go on record saying it again. Functions are probably the most powerful tool when it comes to programming. In fact, if you're familiar at all with all the breakthrough research that's happening in the field of machine learning, well, it's all powered by functions. So I hope I was helpful for getting you excited about some functions.
But that's everything you need to know to get started with programming in regards to functions.